All right. We're live. I'm going to try these Finger Food Factory Tater Rounds. If you missed it, go check out the last video I did on Pinnacle Studio 21 and that finally being resolved. Even though it's about that, I was starting to cook my food as I was telling that story. Two birds with one stone. And there was something weird in the bottom of the oil that made it just sputter up and bleh, shoot everywhere. It scared me a bit, too. So I'm going to dump that oil out. Because, you know, also, like, there's weird slimies on the bottom. Yeah, I'm not going to trust this oil anymore. Although it has been reused several times, and the color of it looks... Oh, whoops, I spilled some on the counter. The color of the oil looks as though it could still be good for cooking. But, can you guys see that separation of whatever the heck that stuff on the bottom is there? I have no idea. There's a slight chance some water accidentally got into here. Let's see here. Okay. Ah, still a little bit warm. But, I don't know if you guys will be able to see... That's a weird sludgy layer down there. Disgusting, disgusting, disgusting. Yick. Yicky. So. So I looked online for the first time to see how to dispose of old cooking oil. And they're like, the one thing that I read quickly was put it in a disposable, sealable container, non-recyclable. And throw it away. So what I'm going to do with this, put it aside, let it cool. I'm actually thinking maybe, although it smells kind of gross, some of that weird grody smell is actually coming from the tater rounds. Thankfully, once I get down in there, they don't smell too bad. There's some weird black spots on some of them, and I'm not sure what the heck that is. I'm going to read the ingredients quickly. Um... This is, where are the ingredients? Unless I, no, I couldn't have torn, oh, here we go. So, potatoes, palm oil, corn flour, garlic powder, onion powder, salt, turmeric, and chili flakes. Oh, that's what those are, chili flakes. Mmm, these sound really yummy. Like, really, really yummy. So, let me, um, quickly wipe down our stove here. This is soap and water mix, my mom's genius idea. And then I'm going to spread a bunch in there. So I'm going to rinse this out over in the sink. Yeah, and the stove can not complain at me because it's got moisture on the uh, control panel here. If you set anything, even a loaf of bread on the control panel, it's going to scream at you. Oh, also, I need to uh, put a squirt of it over here on the counter where I spilled some. I'm really happy that I got the Pinnacle Studio thing resolved. That has, like, been gnawing at me for a while. Because I really, really want to upgrade. And it's going to be eight months out before they have another version. Or not, uh, before they have the patch out. And even then, I don't know if it's going to fix things. But I'm going to try and refrain from talking about Pinnacle Studio here. And focus on other things like the cooking of these tater tots, tater rounds here. So that's been wiped down. I'm going to actually bring you guys over here to the sink to watch me do this bit of it here. We need to. First of all, I have some more working room by closing the dishwasher there. I need to get myself some soap. Whenever you cook with oil, you always have to put soap directly in the pan. Anyone who says otherwise, you probably have oily pans and didn't notice it. This is one thing that kind of sort of bugs me. And I'm not trying to be super mean here by saying this. My parents see this. But a lot of times... And I could have done this once or twice too, okay? So maybe I'm at fault here. But our dishwasher has a slight issue where it, like a lot of the cups and stuff on the top don't get clean. They have weird hard food particles on it in the end. 
And it's, no, and you don't want to drink out of a cup that has random dirty food particles. Although I think the dishwasher does go through a superheated stage. So, and they're also dry too. So supposedly it, it might possibly be sterile, I think, I'm not sure. But the big thing is, um... Yeah, there we go. That's not a perfect clean, but good enough. But the big thing is that my uh, parents, my mom and my stepdad, a lot of times they just put the, uh... They just put the cups and stuff away really quickly without even noticing that they're dirty. And so then I go along and I go through six cups. This one's dirty, that one's dirty, this one's dirty, that one's dirty, put them all by the sink. Finally, a cup that I can drink out of that's not dirty. It just... Yeah, so we need to get this washer fixed. That's one thing that kind of sort of bugged me. So first of all, since we're going to be working with hot oil, we need to turn this pan on as high as it will go and get the water out, which is going to happen really fast because we're working with an induction stove here, guys. Induction is amazing. Induction is spinning magnets underneath the pot that cause the pot to heat up. Not the element, but the pot. It is the pot that heats up because of the spinning magnets. The stove top will get hot, but that's only because the pan or the pot got hot. So, yeah. We're looking pretty good there. I'm going to go ahead and turn it down. Because you can also get, like, stupid hot really fast. And then you put your oil in and it's too hot and it causes problems and mess ups. Yeah. You know, I'm also wondering if I could have possibly saved the oil by straining it out better than it was. Because my guess is that some of the particles in the bottom uh, just grew... And kind of started going moldy and stuff. That's my guess as to what was going on here tonight. So, but the interesting thing, one thing I'm thinking about doing, not interesting, well, I guess so. One thing I'm thinking about doing is I want to start and maybe do a little series about um, when food goes bad just to kind of like show what it looks like we got pure sunflower oil here because like i looked online to see what orange juice was like when it was bad because there was some orange juice that i was pretty sure was going bad or over the edge just on the edge but i wasn't positive about it looks so much nicer clear oil so I did some research online and i found answers that were very helpful and ultimately told me to throw out the juice but it didn't have any visual pictures. So I want to show some visual video of it and give you a good visual. Because one thing I noticed that was cool, actually, kind of, was that the orange juice that was going bad was uh, sticking to the sides of the, the container a little bit more. Like, you wash orange juice, you swash it around in a clear container, you'll see it swish around and go back down to the bottom. But if you swish around when it's going bad, you'll see it create this icky film of juice sticking to the sides of the container and coating it. Almost like if you had paint in a jar just in the bottom and then you switched it around and the paint covered the jar so then you couldn't see the inside of it. But more translucent than paint. So, we've got that going here. I would grab a thermometer but I don't know where our... I don't know where our non-digital or analog, I guess, thermometer is. So what we're going to do here is grab a tater tot. I'm going to grab some tongs here at the safe. Not quite. So we're going to turn this back up to our power. We won't keep it there. Because that will get so hot, you'll get smoke from the oil really fast. Oops. I did not mean to drop it in, but I did. Let's also get a bowl ready too, so I'm going to scoop these out with. Now hopefully these are nice and they do what most fried food does when it's being fried and it gets to where it's done, <coughs> which is where it floats.
because they're also supposed to be extra crispy. Keep frozen and cook thoroughly. You know, potatoes don't strike me as one of those things that would get you sick if you don't cook it thoroughly, but then I could have forgotten something from my culinary class. So yeah, the amount that that's bubbling, I'm going to go ahead and turn it down just to 7 for now. Make sure that our fry... Okay, so it's not sticking, so... Definitely going to get a little more time. And we're going to go ahead and I'm going to grab a slotted spoon here. And just spoon a bunch of fries in. you got to be careful if we put too many in then the oil will really like to just bubble over. But if you do it enough times in your desired size pot, you'll find out how much you can put in. And, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Mm-mm-mm. Let me see what the directions say for... So, preheat an oil to 177 Celsius, 350 Fahrenheit. Fill basket half full, on half level, with frozen product. Deep fry for 3 to 4 minutes. Spread on absorbent paper. Serve immediately. It is recommended when using this cooking method to use non-hydrogenated liquid cooking oil. So I will actually set a timer for the next batch, but for this one though, you can see there's lots of nice bubblies happening in there, that's good. And I forget why, because I couldn't find it last time I tried to look it up, but there was something I read online where it's good to have like new cooking oil and then you add a little bit of the old used cooking oil. It does something to help the process go quicker and taste better or something like that. I just noticed, if you see bottom left corner, there's a little bit of a flicker on the screen of the stove there. That's not present in real life. That's just device synchronization with the camera sync. Things are going nice so far. Actually, what I do want to do is turn on this uh, fan here so we suck any smoke out. Mm. Give those another minute or two, and then I'll pull them out. We'll go ahead and do some other ones, and we'll set a timer this time for them. And I'm going to just come in here and grab it's He's super hungry. I haven't eaten a lot today, which is not good. Mm. There we go. Mmm. Yeah. That one's floating. So we should start to see the others float here in a second. They're like half floating. There we go, we got them all floating. Now they say place on absorbent paper. I mean, that's not a bad idea. Personally for me though, I'm kind of more of an oil fan. I'll let the oil just soak down. Okay. 
Here's our first batch, and remember this is three to four minutes. Hot spoon as I come and scoop them from over here. I'm gonna actually do like two spoonfuls. Try that. And then four minute timer. Now we need something to have these with. Well, we don't need something to have these with, but it might not be a bad idea. So I am going to grab something <coughs> that I really, really like. Here we have some... Doom Cow. Salsa Lista, prepared sauce refried, sofrito slash refried, con trocitos naturales. I think it means it's like natural or something. When I first saw this, I thought it was like some weird Spanish salsa in a little package, and I bought it on sale at Smith's. 30 cents was 69 cents, so I might buy these new, because they're so good, when I run out of my little stock here. But it's actually not a salsa, it's more of like a tomato sauce. It, yep, 100% natural. Water, tomato concentrate, diced tomato, diced green and or red bell pepper, diced onion, vegetable oil, may contain soybean, cottonseed, or sunflower oil, salt, sugar, garlic powder, citric acid, sodium benzoate, which is 0.05%, and potassium sorbate, 0.05% as preservative. And the front end just makes it look so yummy and delicious. Which it is. It's kind of like ketchup. It's a little bit sweet, but it's not super sweet. Like, I don't like normal ketchup because it's sweet. Now, and here is more, because I opened one up and I didn't know. i got to remember which is which. This one's the good one. And this one with the folded down there, it's weird. It, like, it has a slightly more bitter taste to it than the others do. And so I think it might be bad. And I've kind of wanted someone to double check that for me. Although I'm not sure. But they're not expired either. There is somewhere on the label is the... Oh. Stamped right up there. 08. 01. 2019. So we're still good. And yeah. And the sauce on the edge there makes it look gross, but... Ew. Smells gross. I'm going to have to taste this and make sure that it is still good. Mm hmm Tastes fine. Now we'll try the one that I know for a fact is good. And that's the other thing too, is I'm kind of worried, like maybe... Mm. Hmm. This one tastes a little bit sweeter which there could be some slight variation. Especially when it's 100% natural. You know, like maybe one tomato was a little bit sweeter than another tomato. So, hmm. There's definitely a slightly more bitter taste to the first one, but it's not super bad. Uh, 31 seconds left on the clock here. I'm going to go ahead and taste one of these because this is probably cool now that I can taste it. Hmm. Hmm. Well, maybe. So it's... Oh, that nice crunchy outside. I wouldn't say extra crispy. Ah. But, it does have that yummy crunch to it. There's also this good flavor. Look at that. Stuck together. Okay, I am going to... I'm going to fry one more small little batch here. And 
and then we'll call it cell. Let's put one more on. We'll fry this. Give them a little more separation. Boom. So, yeah, it's got a good flavor to it that's... It's different than your normal. But not... It's like... Imagine a tater tot, but with a slight amount of seasoning to it. And I'm smelling that smell, too, that I was smelling earlier. A little bit stronger. It's almost like a beef smell, which I do not like raw beef. It smells nasty. Excuse me. Once it's cooked, it's good. Hmm. So not bad. For one dollar, it's actually really, really good. <coughs> and that extra flavor to it... <coughs> like... Baked in the oven, these could be pretty good too. They wouldn't be as crispy. <coughs> but they could be pretty good too, baked in the oven. <coughs> um... Or even the microwave. That would be a last resort for me, but it could be good in the microwave, too. Here at back. I'm going to go grab my microwave. Manufactured in North America by Himalaya International, Hamilton, New Jersey. Customer service at HimalayaInt.com <coughs> Interesting, they've also got manufactured, just below they have manufactured by... Oh, marketed, MKTB, marketed in North America by Himalaya. Manufactured by Himalaya. Some FSSC, some numbers. Certified company, a, a Vanguard Gujarat, 384355, India. <coughs> Interesting. Interesting. Also, these expire 2020. So, a year and a quarter left before they expire in, well, February. So yeah, about a year and a quarter. <coughs> hmm. Ah, uh, let's see, ah. Finger Food Factory, all time favorite snacks and appetizers are made from authentic, pure and all natural ingredients. Our facility is pure, Vegetarian uses modern technology to ensure quality and food safety. <coughs> that's a that's a nice little blurb there. <coughs> it's short and to the point, and it does get the point across. And they are um, all natural. They're not certified organic, but I mean potatoes, palm oil, corn flour, garlic powder. Onion powder, salt, turmeric, and chili flakes. <coughs> so let's go ahead and again stuck together. Now, when you're done with oil like this, don't throw it out. You want to reuse it. Oil costs money, and you can reuse it for a while, but you got to strain it and put it in a container. And I'm, I'm going to show you a little tip that I do, especially since, you know, you might be worried about the jar becoming too hot and cracking, which a lot of jars can handle actually quite a bit 
of temperature change here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the lid on this. And I'm going to just bring it carefully over to the sink. And I'm going to bring you guys over to... Okay, this is one trick that you can do to ensure that you get your pot cooled down <coughs> in the sink. So you have to have a lid. Um, I do not see the, uh, huh, it's supposed to be, oh, the, the plug is right here. So, you have a lid, put it on, make sure your sink's running cold water, keep your pot as far away from your water source as possible. We're going to turn it on carefully. And it's going to be a little bit sputtering, sputtering. Also have a pan that won't warp. These pans won't warp. Okay. Once you get a water stream going where it's less likely to sputter up, I'm going to let that go for a bit. I'm going to come over. I'm going to grab some ice. Make sure you don't cover the floor too much. Nice. I'm going to go ahead and shut that off for now. We might fill up with a little more. If you accidentally do get some water inside of... I'm going to go get some more. So if you do accidentally get some water inside of there, what you can do next time you to use it, or even better this time for safety reasons so you don't start using it and have a big splatter, is you can actually take, uh, slowly cook the water out, cook it at like a medium high temperature, and not like super hot, but let it cook the water out slowly. And you heat up that water, will evaporate. Or, you know. And you can also use like a splatter shield to help with that. You can also put it so that the lid is partially off, but covering it mostly if you don't have a splatter shield. You know, do something like that. So we'll let the steam out. Wow. Okay. That is pretty good for now. That will... Wow, the water is actually pretty warm, but it's cooling off quickly because of the ice. That will provide some nice, quick cooling for our stuff. For our oil there. There's the old grody oil over there. That's just, I mean, have a look at the separated layer of whatever that nasty stuff is on the bottom there. It looks like clear oil with some grodies floating on top of it. I don't know. Might burn that, might not, but it probably can't burn it right now. We're probably in a no burn because of all the fires going on, which sadly I heard from a customer at the dollar store today that uh, they like kind of chose to let the fires burn, which I get is like a good thing in a lot of cases. Sometimes you do need to let the bushes burn down somewhat because they found that fires are even more worse and out of control if you don't ever let a forest fire burn a little bit here and there. But I think in this case, you know, it was some maybe slight bad judgment. They chose to let them go because they thought it'd be helpful. And I've heard that where they're burning, it's almost like nothing but houses. As long as they do choose to let it burn, because it's good. But a lot of times, in this case, I think it was the best option here. So, let's, I'm going to eat, and then clean up. So, um, I'm going to try some with my Doom Cow Salsa Lista. Uh, this button pointed at me. That's a good view. Tilt you down just a bit. There we go. There we go. Mm. These are looking good. I'm going to quickly try the one with the black spot, which I assume is the pepper flake. 
Let's actually, I just want to see. That's a big pepper flake, if that's a pepper flake. It has a weird. I don't know. Hmm. There's also some dark spots. That one. Mm. Hot. So they taste good. Maybe not the best I've ever had. But they are definitely good. You get them nice and crispy. Those dark spots. Mm, I don't know. The only thing I can think of would be the pepper flakes. I don't think they'd use potatoes with some dark spots. If they did, it wouldn't be too bad. Because I think the worst a potato can do, if you still have some eyes on there, that's the spots that grow out into stems. The worst that can happen is you just get a little bit sick. It's not like a you could die ah, if you eat this situation. They're good, but the salsa leads to two. <coughs> but... Hmm. I don't know. Let me try the other salsa leads to really quickly. Because I'm wondering if maybe I've just turned from my liking of salsa leads to for some odd reason. Hmm. A little bit sweeter. So. There's this odd, slight bitter flavor to the salsa leaf that I don't remember being present before. And it's definitely not like these ones have been open for a little while and they're going bad. It doesn't say... Excuse me doesn't say hmm, how many days they can be open after, you know, like how many days you can need to eat them after they're opened. Um, well, best of use by lot slash C, printed in the package, consumer preferment, yeah, that's just in Spanish, same thing. Meducal.com, M I. D U C A L. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder if I could send them a comment. Like, they have. Probably go on their website. I don't speak Spanish. Although, they do have some English on here because they're in America. So, I liked this stuff. And I might still like it. Except for maybe, you know, that slight bitterness is throwing me off here. So when I finally eat these down and open up another one, we'll see if that one still has bitterness. Uh, I don't know if we'll do it on YouTube for you guys, but that will be a thing that we'll see in real life here. One thing that I really hate is when I buy something and that something's kind of sort of bad, but kind of sort of not obvious. And so you think you don't like it anymore and you don't have it for a while. For a while when it turns out you did like it. And I realized this with onions, like once I made some of the onions and it didn't taste quite right, but it wasn't obviously bad, because the onions were just kind of partially going away, going bad. And so then I kind of didn't like onions for a while, and then after I liked them again, and I realized, oh, it's when the onions go bad, I don't like them, and I go into this whole, can I trust onions right now kind of a thing. So I'm better at that now, but it like still, you know, affects me, and especially with restaurants and stuff, kind of makes you wonder... Was it like a one-time incident, or is it still going on? Did they permanently change their recipe? I don't know. I'm not sure. Do I want to ask them? I don't know. Like, one thing that thankfully was temporary was Rancheritos using this mixed cheese. It's like cheddar cheese and then some white, whatever the white cheese is, like some Spanish blend. I did not like that cheese at all. Their cheddar cheese is fine, but that cheese was bad. 
Thankfully, they've only used it twice. So I think it's like, uh, oh, we're out of our cheddar cheese, so we're on to this cheese. Anyways, um, yeah. These are good. Um, um, if you liked it, get subscribed down below and leave a like. Check out my other stuff. I've got a lot better edited videos that I work on. This is just the quickie get something out. Keep being active and uploading stuff on YouTube. See you guys whenever's next.